Attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with Oliver, Betty, Monica, Daniel, Blue Light, <laughs> Kelvin, Obor, Vindra, famous, famous Vindra, Carl, Amy, um, Joseline, Enazio, please, on a scale from 0 to 10, how is my audio? Please, mainly my audio. <clears throat> I hope you guys can hear me okay. Today is a very special day because we'll be deep diving on this beautiful concept and important concept of B value. Okay? And please type here for me where are you in the Lean Six Sigma journey? Where are you in the Lean Six Sigma journey? Are you completely new? Are you a white belt? Are you a yellow belt, a green belt, a black belt, a master black belt? Where are you in the Lean Six Sigma journey? Okay? And the reason I am asking this is because those <clears throat> free sessions, every time that I come here on YouTube to deliver a free master class, I have one single objective. To make you a better belt. Is that clear? So we have green belts, we have black belts, we have a lot of white belts. Okay. We have many green belts as well. Type here clear if you understand that my objective here with you guys. Normally these sessions they take from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. And sometimes a little bit more. But normally I do my best to keep it. Uh, from 30 minutes to 60 minutes, okay? And once again, the main objective is to <coughs> make you a better belt. And it's interesting because yesterday I was talking about the difference between PDCA and Lean Six Sigma. And one of the things that I've explored is that the toolbox of Lean Six Sigma is full of, I would say, sophisticated tools. The Lean Six Sigma toolbox is full of, we can say, sophisticated tools. Maybe we can argue that Lean Six Sigma, in Lean Six Sigma, we have a lot of advanced tools and that includes statistics for sure yeah and there are two important moments <clears throat> when i'm talking i like to 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 take notes as well so i have a sense of time yes if you guys are taking notes too two important moments where um this conversation about p-value two important moments where this conversation is absolutely crucial. This conversation is important during the entire Lean Six Sigma journey. Define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. But there are two moments that are super critical. Root cause analysis or root cause validation. That is the last step of root cause analysis. Yeah, root cause validation. And final improvement validation. Final improvement validation. Okay. In your point of view, do you recommend us? operating with population data or sample data? What do you guys recommend? Imagine that I am starting my Lean Six Sigma journey and I am being mentored by you guys. And then I have a question for you. I have, I have a lot of data here in my processes. Do you recommend me to collect 100% of the data or do you recommend me to work with sample data or sampling yeah 
And why, I love that, Amy, random sampling, yeah? And why is sampling important? Because a sample is cheap or cheaper than the population, faster and more controllable, more controllable. It is more controllable to work with sample than with the population, okay? <laughs> Hermon, you remember the, yeah, the example of the blood test, right? Exactly, exactly. And then your sample must be sufficient. We are talking about sample size. It must be reliable. And here we are talking about the the measurement system yeah your sample must be contextual contextual so if you are collecting a sample about christmas trees about sales of christmas trees during christmas this is one scenario if you are talking about uh, collecting a sample of sales of christmas trees in february you know, I need to consider this context, for example, in terms of um, when you collected this sample. So your sample must be sufficient, sample size, reliable, with a good measurement system, must be contextual, must be properly segmented or stratified, segmented. Yeah, this is not, uh, this is not, it has nothing to do with context yeah context normally we are talking about um, variables that we cannot control or we cannot set we can predict but we cannot set we can predict christmas but we cannot control we cannot say you know what i want christmas now we cannot have christmas now yeah so it's the same con concept of um, of block if there is any black belt here, you know what I'm talking about, yeah? <clears throat> but then there are other factors that you can control, yes? For example, I can, I can, I can go ahead and out of my population select parts from the first shift from the machine A prepared by operator Mary yeah I can do that now or tomorrow or the day after tomorrow yeah and obviously I need to segment I need to stratify my sample according to my study objectives yes so after I know that I have I need 100 samples from a measurement system that is accurate and precise um, collected on March, second week of March. Um, first shift from machine X from operator John. Then I, now that I know all of these, when I go to the population fragment that was set by that 100 data points, this measurement system uh, on second week of March, uh, first shift first shift uh, machine X and operator Mary when I go there out of 1000 parts for example to take my 100 piece boom these 100 out of 1000 must be collected randomly 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 yeah because when you have a random sample or a sample that was collected randomly, you maximize, you drastically maximize the chances that this sample represents, represents the population, yeah? Or that fragment of the population that you have set. Yes, wonderful, beautiful. Oh, how many samples? Wow, that's a $1 million question. It, 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 it depends. 
It depends. There are some classic sample size, for example, capability analysis, 100, because of the precision of a CP, CPK, PP, PPK, and a sigma level. Uh, regression, uh, there is a recommendation of at least 40, 40, um, let's say, rows. Yeah, 40 data points for Y and for each X. There is a recommendation, for example, measurement system analysis, gauge RNR 60, three operators, two replicates, 10 parts. There is a recommendation for attribute agreement analysis instead of 10, three operators, two replicates, but 50 parts. So five times 60, so 300. Yeah, so there are some classic recommendations in terms of sample size but the true answer for what's the what's the the, the right you know the the sufficient the universal sufficient sample size it's very dangerous to say i know that probably you've heard about 30 right who has heard about 30 oh sample size if you have 30 or more you are good Be careful, be careful, be careful. Believe me, there are many scenarios where 30 data points is not enough. Sample size of 30 is not enough. Yeah? No, Oliver, there is no standard sample size. Yeah, wonderful. So, <clears throat> Marcelo, we should be sampling well because p-value will be the most important number for us to look at and make conclusions about the population based on a sampling exercise. I'll say that again. I'll say that again. I've spent um, some amount of time here talking about sampling before talking about p-value because p-value will be by far the most important number for us to look and state a conclusion about the population based on a sampling exercise or on a sample collection. So there is p-value in measurement system analysis, gauge r &R, yes. Is there a p-value for regression, yes. Is there p-values for DOE, yes. Is there p-value for, for gauge r, &R attribute agreement analysis, yes. Is there a p-value for Accuracy, linearity, yes. Is there a p-value for two proportions? Yes. Two sample t. For one proportion, yes. For one sample t. For one sample sign. For the non-parametric hypothesis test, yes. For ANOVA, for chi-square. We can find p-value in many, many, many tools and techniques that we use in Lean Six Sigma. From 0 to 10, how much are you following me so far? from zero to 10. How much are you following me? How much are you following me? Yeah? Great question from Oliver. P stands for probability. <laughs> P-value, first of all, P-value is placed on a very gray area. There is a lot of discussions about p-value. There is a lot of debates about p-value. And one of them is related to as the association of p-value to probability. So see, in Lean Six Sigma, the statistics that we use in Lean Six Sigma we want to have a certain level of rigor that is enough for us to be brutally assertive. 
Yes, we hate trial and error, we hate guessing. But in Lean Six Sigma, we do not have the same rigor that we'll see in Academy. We do not have. It's, it's, it, we, we don't want to have. We don't want to have. So the things that I'll be talking about here to explain, there are many different ways to explain p-value. So this, the learning strategy that I have prepared here for you today is robust, theoretically speaking, but it is very practical. Very practical. Type clear if you understood that. And in this sense, I will recommend, I will recommend that you take P of p-value as probability. But keep in mind that many statisticians will not like it very much. Okay? But believe me, believe me, this learning strategy will help you to fully internalize on a very robust point of view, theoretically speaking, and very robust on a practical point of view as well. So if we are saying that p-value is associated to a probability measurement, it should vary from which value to which value. P-value varies from which value to which value. Who knows? P-value varies from... Who knows? Beautiful, Fidel. Beautiful. From zero to one. From zero to one. Yeah, here it's another <laughs> question that uh, you guys will see some debate on literature. Who created p value? Who created p value? <laughs> yeah, and so there are some authors that say that this is a creation from Fisher from Ronald Fisher. There are some authors that say that it was not created by Fisher, that uh, Fisher kind of uh, helped p-value to become popular, yes, to become popular. But the importance of Fisher for the fact that we use p-value so much nowadays is not questionable. We cannot, we cannot question about the influence, the importance of Fisher's work to make p-value so popular, so popular, yes? Yeah, Oliver, I will get there, yeah? I know it's, a, it's a, an exciting topic, yes? Uh, but for all of you guys, you can ask a question just once. If you guys keep asking the same question many times, then it gets annoying, right? It gets almost rude, yeah? So, uh, stay calm, stay calm, yeah? We'll get there. I, I am seeing your questions here, okay? <laughs> Take a deep breath, you know? And we'll get there, we'll get there. Okay, we'll be talking about alpha, 0 0.05, yeah? But please don't, don't 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 keep repeating questions, yeah. So so uh, it's it's kind of weird. It's kind of yeah. And it also breaks the learning strategy because uh, every time that I come here to deliver a session, or when I am recording a session. Because, see, it's not only about knowing the knowledge. Believe me, I can explain p-value in 30 seconds. I can do that. But 
a good educator thinks in terms of the learning strategy. What's a learning strategy? It's a path, it's a sequence of steps where you'll be maximizing the chances of full internalization of the concepts, even for people that have never heard about that. that that's my function. That's my mission. Yeah? And then every time that there are, uh, you know, uh, repeated questions, it, it kind of uh, breaks, the, breaks the sequence that I have here in my mind to explain in a way that everybody can uh, understand, yes? Uh, with love. By the way, can you guys feel the love or not? Type here yes, if you, if you can feel the love, yeah? Because this is such an important, such an important topic, okay? Can you feel the love? And can you feel the love tonight? Come on! Yes? From zero to one. And if we consider probability, yeah? Uh, we can consider zero to 100%. Yes, zero to one hundred percent. Okay, but probability of what? Probability of what? Of what? And here I must talk about hypotheses. Hypothesis. 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 What's the PhD thesis? It's a statement that was already validated. Hypo is less than, it is half. So, hypothesis less than a thesis. So, it's a statement that we still need to validate. I don't know if it is true or false. I don't know if it is true or false. For example, I have collected some data sample. I have collected some data from a certain population. This sample is sufficient, reliable, contextual, seg well segmented and random. From this sample, I want to know if the population is normal. I'll say that again. From 0 to 10, how clear is that? How clear is that? How clear is that? I want to, at this point, no, no, no standard deviation, no mean. Yes, let's, let's, let's just, I'll get there to the significance level. Yeah. But, but come here with me. There is a certain population and I don't know if this population behaves according to a normal probability distribution. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, let me show you guys something here. Yeah, let's suppose I have here a population by the size of by the size of uh, 10,000. Okay? 10,000. 10,000 data points, but I don't have I don't have this I don't have this data normally. Normally I do not have this data. I do not have this data, yeah? I do not have the population data, yeah? This is the population. Does it look like a normal probability distribution, yes or not? You guys tell me. Does it look as a normal probability distribution, yes or not? Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Excellent. Yeah, I can run. Or no, let's 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 do something different. Yeah, so this is 
our population. This is our population. Yeah? And then see what I'll be doing. What I'll be doing. Yeah, very likely this population is normal. But now I'll be taking a sample by the size of 100, for example. I'll take here a sample. Yeah. So sample data I'll be taking here. Yeah. Sample from columns. Um, let's take 100 data points from this column here and I'm going to store. Yeah, I'm, I'm asking Minitab to take 100 um, data points from this column and store in this column here. Yeah, so Minitab took a random sample out of this 10,000 took 100 data points and once again let's suppose I don't know I, I don't know if the population behaves according to a normal probability distribution I don't know I only have in real life type here yes if you understand that in real life normally we don't have this we have only this I'll say that again in real life, normally we don't have this. We don't have this. We have only a sample. Type yes if you understand that. So, based on these 100 data points, I want to state, state to write down conclusions about the population this is key this is key this is very important for you to know based on this sample i want to write down something not about the sample about the population from 0 to 10 how much do you understand that again based on a sample I want to perform some analysis, look at the p-value, and based on p-value, I'll be writing down something about the population. From 0 to 10, how much do you understand that? This is very important. Because one of the most common mistakes is the person takes a sample and writes down conclusion about the sample. <laughs> maybe for the sample you don't need a hypothesis test we are always inferring we are always projecting we are always projecting and, and today I'm going to use the normality test the hypothesis test that is part of the normality test there are many different normality tests here I'm going to use the classic Anderson Darling so I have something that we call no hypothesis no hypothesis no hypothesis yeah and for normality test the no hypothesis is the distribution is normal the distribution is normal Again, this is not a thesis. This is not something validated. It's a hypothesis. I still don't know if the distribution is normal. I have a hypothesis here that says the distribution is normal. And then I have only two possible conclusions I can take this hypothesis or I can reject this hypothesis simple right Neymar I don't know if you guys are very much into soccer Neymar 
is an amazing player. Neymar will be the best player in the world. Oh, okay. Let's 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 check that. I can take this or I can reject this hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah. P value can be understood as the probability of saying that the distribution is not normal, is not normal when in fact it is normal because see if i have the population the population is normal the population is normal we know the population is normal we know that we took a sample do you understand type okay if you understand that there is a risk there is a risk associated there is a risk associated to the mechanism that I am using. Based on a sample, I can state a conclusion that is not right. I can state a conclusion that is wrong. So, what is the risk? You know, there is a risk. There is a risk that I say, oh, this is not normal. Yes, I, I, I'm telling to my client, to my manager, to my students, to my professor, hey, this is not normal. This is not normal. Yes, I am rejecting, rejecting the, the no hypothesis. Hey, this is, hey, this is not normal. Not normal. Not normal. No normal, if you prefer. This is no normal. I am saying this is no normal. But in fact, it is. So again, there are many different ways to interpret p-value. One of my favorite ways is p-value is the probability, probability of rejecting, rejecting the no hypothesis when the no hypothesis is true is true and again in our context in our context yeah in our context it's the same thing of us saying hey this is not normal and in fact it is and then it is normal and then okay let's take this sample stat basic statistics let's run a normative test let's take a look in this p-value yeah so how can we interpret how can we interpret this 0 0.626 yes or if you prefer let's say that this is 62.6 percent yeah and let's write down here together. Let's let's read here together. P value is the probability of rejecting no hypothesis saying, hey, this is not normal. And in fact it is normal. I mean, it's it's a probability for us to stating something where we'll get in trouble. <laughs> I don't know if you guys agree, but 62.6% seems way too high. You know, imagine that you are there presenting, preparing your material to present to a client, to a boss, and then you are writing down in your report, in your PowerPoint, in your Word, you are writing down the population 
does not behave according to a normal probability distribution. This population does not behave. And then Marcelinho comes and say, hey, this thing that you are writing down, there is a risk. <laughs> there is a risk that you are wrong. That's a risk. There is a risk that you are wrong. Oh, really? What's the size of this risk? The size of this risk is 62.6%. Yeah? How do we know that the no hypothesis is true or not? Guys, how can we check if the no hypothesis is true for sure? How can we do that? How can we check if the no hypothesis is true for sure? For sure. Well, well. For sure, only if I use the population data. For sure, only if I use the population data. Who is following me on that? Type me if you understood that. We will never know if the no hypothesis is completely true. Because... Yes, because we would need to have the population data. And that's why we can never accept no hypothesis. We can never accept no hypothesis. Because in order to accept no hypothesis, we must have the population data. And if you have the population data, you don't need to run hypothesis tests. So you can either reject the no hypothesis or fail to reject. There is no accept no hypothesis. I'll say that again. You can either reject the no hypothesis or fail to reject the no hypothesis. I'll say that again. You can either reject the no hypothesis. Whoa, I have evidences. I do have evidences to say this distribution is non-normal, is non-normal. Or you can say, I don't have enough evidences to reject normality. I don't have. Are you saying that this is normal for sure? No, I am not saying. What I'm saying is that right now with the data that I have, with the technique that I have used, I cannot say that this is not normal. I cannot reject normality. So I'm gonna assume normality. I'm gonna assume normality. Let me generate here. Let me generate here. Yes, Tola Kelly. If you consider this beautiful, type here for me, beautiful. Let me put here a population population with non normal data. If this is eye opening, type here for me eye opening. Yeah. And then let's take here a sample with non normal data. Yeah. And let's put here calc random data exponential 10,000 data points population non normal. Yeah? And then we can easily see type here yes if you understand that this is non normal. Type yes if you understand that this is non normal. Type yes, please, if you understand that this is non normal.
¿ya? Yeah, beautiful. So I'm gonna take a sample from here. A sample from here. Yeah, and then <laughs> yes, and then let's run now a normality test. Yes, for non-normal. But let's let's before clicking here in OK. Yeah, let's reflect here together. The no hypothesis is still the population is normal that's the no hypothesis population distribution is normal yeah distribution is normal now that we know we know that the population is non-normal we took a sample we are running a hypothesis test If I go ahead and write down, again, the same situation, the same situation. Hey, hey, client, hey, manager, hey, boss, the population is not normal. The population is non-normal. Yeah, I am writing down, the population is non-normal. And I'm doing this, again, for... For this scenario, tell me what's the risk? What is the risk, high or low, for me? Yeah, knowing that the population, the population, is absolutely non-normal. If I go ahead and write down, hey client, hey manager, the population is non-normal. What 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 should be if my sampling strategy is good enough? What would I expect to see, you know? Or, or, or what would I expect in terms of risk? Do you think the risk is high or low? Type here for me. From this population, I am saying, I am writing down that the population is no normal. Is no normal. Do you think the the risk should be high or low? Let, let me go let me go again let me go again because this is very important and I want to see as many responses as possible okay so come come here with me forget everything forget everything forget everything take a look here this population here for you seems normal or non normal just just tell me that just tell me that let's go step by step this distribution here seems normal, normal or non-normal. Just that. Type here. Does it look normal or non-normal? And I want to see as many responses as possible. Yeah, this is clearly non-normal. Are, this is this is a normal probability take a look take a look see the difference this is normal this is normal bell shaped curve bell shaped curve high frequency in the middle low frequency on the extremes very symmetric this is skewed this is skewed. There is a concentration, strong concentration on the left side, and then it is skewed to the right. Yes? So, from 0 to 10, how much do you understand that this is normal? This is non-normal. From 0 to 10, please. 
how much do you understand that this is normal this is no normal because of the shape Sh normal shape normal shape yeah beautiful excellent excellent Yeah? Now, again, this is non-normal. I took a sample. I took a sample from this population. Boom. And then I want to check, based on this sample, if the population is normal or non-normal. If my sample is representative, it will translate the population. So based on this sample, if I write down saying that the distribution is non-normal, the risk is high or low? If I take a fragment of this population and I write down saying, hey, this is no normal, no normal, no normal, the risk is high or low? The risk for me to write down saying, hey, let's reject normality, let's reject normality. This is no normal. This is no normal. It is high or low. It is high or low. So I still see a mix of low and high. And I will go I will go again. I'll go again. I'll go again. I'll go again. Is this shape normal or non-normal? Type here for me. Is this shape here normal or non-normal? Is this shape normal or non-normal? Type here for me and please type the... Um, yeah, I want to see the, the highest number of responses as possible because this is so important, so important. So, for this question, I see everybody putting no normal. No normal, okay? No normal, yeah? So, I see a very low standard deviation. Standard deviation tend, uh, a disagreement tending to zero, okay? So, first step, we are good. First step, we are good. Not normal or non-normal. If this is non-normal, non-normal, I should write down in the report. What, what? Tell me if this is correct or incorrect. Type here for me. Correct or incorrect. Based on that, I'm going to write down on the report, on the report that this is non-normal. I'm going to write down in the report that this is non-normal or not normal. Do you think this is correct or incorrect? Based on this distribution, I'm going to write down that this is non-normal. Yeah? 
Do you think this is correct or incorrect? Correct or incorrect? I'm going to write down that this is non-normal. This is correct or incorrect. Yeah, this is the population. This is the population. Yes, the population distribution. Correct. So I see a lot of correct. So we are still together. We are still together. Perfect. Perfect. Now, I took a representative sample of this population. Now I took a sample that properly represents this population. I took a sample because it's cheaper, faster, more controllable. I took a sample. If the sample is representative of the population, the sample will indicate, suggest a normal or non-normal. You tell me, normal or non-normal. The sample of this population will indicate a normal or a non-normal distribution. The sample would suggest, would indicate that the population is normal or non-normal. So again, this is non-normal. This is non-normal. If I take, no, 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 it's not central limit theorem. You guys are, you, you, no, you guys are making a huge confusion. The central limit theorem, I take multiple samples and I plot the average of each sample. If I take the, the distribution of the average, it will be normal. No, here, no, here I'm taking a sample I'm going to do here for you guys. If I take here, for example, a sample of non-normal data, yeah, a sample of non-normal data, take a look. And we can take multiple, multiple samples. Sample of non-normal data. Take a look. It's skewed. It's skewed. A sample of a non-normal data if it is representative, will reflect the population. I'm not talking about multiple samples calculating the mean and distribution of means. This is another conversation. So I think that that's where uh, I am losing your, you guys. I have a population of a skewed distribution. I took a sample of this skewed distribution. It will be skewed. It will be skewed. Yes, Amy. Yes, sample is also not normal. Also not normal. Yeah? No, I'll, I'll be asking now about the risk. Okay? So, now it's the $1 million question. And, and uh, stay present here with me. Stay present here with me. If you look at this sample, and, and this sample, and based on this sample, I am writing down, hey, this is non-normal. Non-normal. Do you think I am correct or incorrect if i say that this is non-normal do you think i am correct or incorrect if i say that this is non-normal i am correct or incorrect i am saying that this is non-normal this is non-normal I see a lot of corrects. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, this is no normal. Simple, simple, simple. This is no normal. So I am correct. 
I am correct. I am correct. This is no normal. Yeah? The population is clearly showing that the population is clearly showing that this is no normal and the sample is strongly suggesting that this is no normal. So if I write down that the population is no normal, I mean I'll be correct, yeah. Uh, no, Hermon. No. No, because, see, uh, so if every time that I take a sample, I am incorrect, so why, why to use inferential statistics? If I am incorrect just because I use the sample, why to, use inf why to do blood tests, you know? No, we want, we can have very accurate, very accurate, correct conclusions based on sample. Remember blood test. No, based on what that the sample is wrong. Why, why are you guys saying that this sample is wrong? Guys, stop that. Remember blood test. Sampling is our friend. Type here for me. Sampling is our friend. We love sampling. We love sampling. Type here for me in our chat. No, we can infer only... No, we can infer. And, and, and this is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yes, sampling is our friend. Yes, I'll go there. I'll go there. We need to check the p-value. But, but my point is, I saw on the comments, and I am going in all the comments, because this is so important. If you guys understand that, you guys will unlock the understanding of many, many other concepts. And I had it. I had a sense here that you guys are kind of uh, not trusting sample, P guys. This is pre-industrial revolution mentality. If you guys don't trust sampling, I mean, come on, come on. Sampling is our friend. You know? <laughs> I'll, I'll go there, I'll go there, I'll go there. So, type OK if you understand that population is non-normal and the sample suggests that the population is non-normal. Type OK if you understand that. <laughs> thank you guys thank you no it's my pleasure my pleasure and I, I and I, I love doing what I am doing I, I I love that I love to try to find different learning strategies to to to, to help you internalize in that okay to help you internalize in that and thank you so much for your engagement because if you don't write down in the chat I don't I don't feel if you guys are understanding or not. And I want to feel you guys understanding. So thank you so much for, for your engagement. Okay, okay. So let me ask again. This is the population that is non-normal. This is a sample, and we are considering that this sample is representative of this population. Yeah? Based on this sample, I am writing down that the population is no, no normal. This is correct. This is correct. Now, let me go back to the question. If I write down that the population is non-normal, I am saying, hello clients, hello managers, the population is non-normal. Do you think the risk 
is high or low? Is tending to high or tending to low? High or low? If I state that this distribution is non-normal, if I say that this distribution is non-normal, you understand that the risk is high or the risk is low? Type here for me. Please type here for me. Uh, now there is an explosion of joy here in my heart to see so many people saying low, 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 low. So if the risk is low, if the risk is low, it is expected that when I run the normality test for the non-normal data, for the non-normal data sample, it is expected that p-value is very low. P-value is very low. Meaning, I can say, hey, hey, let's reject normality. Please reject normality. Come on, everybody, let's reject normality. Let's reject normality. Can we say that? Yes. Is there a risk? Yes, there is a risk, but the risk is less than 0 0.005. And every time that this is less than 0 0.05, just one zero, Every time that it is less than 0.05, we consider that the risk is acceptable. We consider that the risk is, is low. That the risk is low. So in this case, the risk is definitely low. Risk of what, Marcelo? Risk of what? Risk of you writing down that the distribution is not normal when in fact the distribution is normal we want, we don't want to make this mistake right we don't want to make this mistake to take a sample and then based on the sample we say that the population is not normal when in fact it is normal so what's the risk oh the risk in this case is very low is very low, very low. Meaning, yes, you can go ahead, you can go ahead, yes. Yes, Hermon, less than 5%. If it is less than 5%, you can go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. Same mechanism, mechanism for root cause analysis, same mechanism for final improvement comparison. So, once again, p-value is a very, very, very powerful, very, very powerful statistics or simply a very powerful number where you can assess the probability, the chances of you stating something that you should not be stating. You are stating that you found the root cause when you should not be stating that. You are stating that your process has changed, yeah, in a way that is statistically significant when you should not be doing that. You are saying that your distribution is not normal when you should not be doing that. Yeah, what's the risk? If the risk is tending to zero, wonderful, amazing. But if the risk is more than 5%, the recommendation is don't, don't do that. Don't reject the null hypothesis. If the risk is more than 5%, the recommendation is don't reject the null hypothesis. I'm glad to know that. I'm glad to know that. Was that helpful, guys? Thank you, Hermon. Thank you. Thank you so much for... I'm glad to know that. And thanks for your engagement and for all of you guys. Was that helpful? Yes or not? Yes or not? Was that helpful? Yeah? I will keep this session here on YouTube. You can retake this session as many times as you want. Yeah? Uh, 
in these open sessions, I take like the concepts and principles. So here I did not show how to calculate p-value. There is a way normally for green belts and black belts. I show how to calculate p-value. Yes, I go in this level of detail, but I hope that with this explanation where we have touched concepts and principles, you have internalized the, this beautiful concept of p-value that is associated to the principle of significance. Yeah, we must always check if our results, our conclusions are statistically significant. Statistical significance is something brutally important. Brutally important. Yeah. Uh, it's 0 0.05. 0. Point, yeah, point oh 0.05. That is 5%, not 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is 50%. There is one more zero. Yeah? 0 0.05. Yes? Wonderful. Guys, thank you so very much. And I hope to see you soon, okay? Next week, there will be a wave on Asia. So there is a chance that we don't have our our master class because it will be exactly on the same the same uh, time slot yeah but uh, in the next week we'll be together for sure yeah uh, thank you Luis thank you I have a question after we reject the no hypothesis do we go and take sample and check again no Hermon normally you don't need to do that you don't need to do that normally Hermon that's a great question that's a great question normally we 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 take other sample or more samples uh, when we fail to reject when we fail to reject and one of the reasons can be because of power yeah power is associated to to many different um, elements, including sample size. So sometimes you may need to collect more samples to increase the power of the test, for example. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad to know you guys enjoyed. Stay safe. Have an amazing rest of week, and let's stay together. Bye bye, guys.